Welcome to all who have gathered here at St. Michael's to celebrate the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand as you are able. Sign ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as the liturgical year draws to an end, the Church uses the scriptures to turn the hearts and minds of her people to the life to come. How will we know when the end is coming? We do not know the day or the hour, but we know that in God's own time, when light shines and triumphs over darkness, and when justice and love rules over all, then time as we know it will no longer matter, and God's second coming will be upon us. Jesus tells us not to run around worrying about when the end will come, but to be faithful to God and trust in God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you are wisdom shining brightly in our midst. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are justice for all ages. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you know and always show us the path of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Together now let us sing the hymn of praise. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Lord our God, grant us the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. We pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In those days, I, Daniel, heard this word of the Lord. At that time, there shall arise Michael, the great prince, guardian of your people. It shall be a time unsurpassed in distress since nations began until time. At that time, your people shall escape, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live forever. Others shall be in everlasting horror and disgrace. But the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament. And those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every priest stands daily at his ministry, offering frequently those same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But this one offered one sacrifice for sins and took his seat forever at the right hand of God. Now he waits until his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering he has made perfect forever those who are being consecrated. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer offering for sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to mark jesus said to his disciples in those days after that tribulation the sun will be darkened the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from the sky 
and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds and from the ends of the earth to the end of the sky. Learn the lesson of from the fig tree. When its branches become tender and sprouts leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that he is near at the gates. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the concepts that has been of great interest to me when teaching morality to high school students is that of motivation. What motivates us as people to do or say or even believe what we do? The most basic or instinctual form of motivation for most people is that of seeking pleasure and avoiding pain. Experts tell us that these are primary <coughs> instinctual behaviors excuse me, motivators. For example, if a child touches something hot, one can be sure they will avoid it in the future. I remember when our oldest two children were small and decided to have a, test, a taste testing sort of activity with the spices for cooking, unbeknownst to their parents. When they hit the cayenne pepper, the game was over. <laughs> you can bet that didn't happen again. We have a wood stove in our house and you don't even need to touch it to know that it's hot. Our kids never did. They also learned that splitting wood can be painful work, and as they got older, they learned to avoid that too. <laughs> but that's another story. <laughs> and if an activity is pleasurable, fun, it will probably be repeated. Remembering when our son was a year and a half or so old, was eating supper in a high chair. We were having spaghetti. His noodles were all cut into short pieces mixed with sauce, mush, basically. And at one point, he reached into his plastic bowl that was suction cupped onto the tray, grabs a handful of spaghetti, and just before intentionally hurling it to the floor, he looks at us and watches our reaction. <laughs> of course, when he did this, it was hilarious. Betsy and I busted out in laughter, and he quickly grabbed three more handfuls and threw them to the floor, looking intently for our reaction. <laughs> As we mature, it becomes apparent that, motivate, uh, that moving beyond immediate pleasure and pain for motivation is essential. We know we cannot eat cheesecake every day for every meal, though I would like to try. We know how good it feels to lay in bed in the morning, but we get up and do what we need to do. We begin to see further down the road, so to speak, and are willing to give up certain pleasures or go through experiences that are painful so we will have something better later. You'll find examples everywhere. A student studies diligently in college to get a good job. Someone avoids a favorite food because of allergies. People work hard at a difficult job to provide for their family. An athlete lifts weights and runs to exhaustion to prepare for the game. But there is a further, even more mature motivator. It's called doing the right thing. People do the right thing not because it's pleasurable, nor that it is avoiding pain either in the short or long term. And it easily moves beyond the individual or the team. It is doing good, expecting nothing in return. Some examples might be bringing food to a neighbor who is going through a tough time, donating a kidney to someone you don't even know, admitting that you are wrong, telling the truth even if it hurts, or donating 
donating to charity, tax break or not. Doing the right thing can be very difficult and at times painful or pleasurable, but those are not the reasons mature moralities choose to act. Most of us, I believe, are on some sort of a continuum when it comes to moral behavior. Most of us probably start out similarly, but move forward at different rates and sometimes revert to less mature actions and then back to more mature ones. It's fascinating for me to look at my own life and see how I am motivated in certain situations. I find myself at times quite childlike, especially when it comes to cheesecake. <laughs> Now that's pleasure. I don't like confrontation with others. I know it is at times necessary, but I'm intimidated by it. I find it painful and I tend to be, I tend to avoid it, just being honest. I'm pretty mature at times too, and I have made decisions and I continue to make decisions that are difficult and are required, sometimes pretty challenging steps at times. All I got here. As a high school teacher, I notice a wide variety of motivational levels in my students. Different approaches from the teacher work for different students at different times. I think we are all at different places on the motivation spectrum. Jesus knew this, and Jesus lived this, and Jesus' life and teaching reflect this. Notice the variety of teaching styles Jesus uses. When he is with shepherds or fishers or farmers, he meets them where they are. When he is with Pharisees, religious leaders, or other scholars, he meets them too where they are. When he is teaching to crowds or just disciples and even individuals, he adjusts. With children, he welcomes them with outstretched arms. Sometimes he uses parables about, like about hell like the rich man and Lazarus, to motivate some for fear of pain or punishment. Most often, he uses images of the kingdom of, or reign of God and how wonderful it is, such as the parable of the pearl of great price or the lost sheep. In today's gospel, Jesus, Jesus uses what is called apocalyptic imagery. The sun grows dark, the moon fails to give light, and stars falling from the sky. Apocalyptic means revelation or to reveal that which is covered, what I like to refer to as teaching or motivating. The ministry of Jesus was all about teaching and motivating everyone he met, and Jesus lived what he taught. Jesus did not avoid pain nor seek pleasure. He did what he needed to do, and he knew what was the right thing right to the very end and we should too. We all have to ask ourselves what might be needed to motivate us more in our own faith journey. We need to continue to do the right thing to the best of our ability and look to Jesus as our model, our teacher of good moral behavior. We now profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Having heard God's word, we now present our words to God for his That's good. I couldn't think of the word, so that's good. <laughs> for all of us, for never failing, for never failing awareness that we will one day be called to account for what we have done and what we have failed to do, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all leaders and citizens, for the ability to listen to one another with genuine humility to reach across the divisions in our midst and build consensus to promote the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the bishops of the United States as they begin their national meeting this week, for wisdom and for courage to make decisions that bring light to the darkness and hope to our people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For grace poured out and received among us, to stand with the poor, the immigrant, the vulnerable, and the prisoner, and to lead the many to justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick of the parish, for all who live with dementia, Alzheimer's, or mental illness, for those who face addiction each day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of all gathered here, for all our beloved dead, especially Claire Schneider, I'm sorry, Schindler, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Holy Father, you have heard our words. Grant them now according to your will and goodness. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs>
pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and stewardship of treasure may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Lord, grant that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so, in the presence of are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glory you without ceasing. With them, too, we confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed us in your own image and entrusted the whole world to our care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, we might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience we had lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered us covenants, and through the prophets taught us to look forward to salvation. And, so, and, and you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made flesh by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, Jesus shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, Jesus proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, and to those of sorrowful heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, Jesus gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, Jesus destroyed death and restored life and that we might live no longer for ourselves but for him who died and rose again for us, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, Jesus might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, Lord, we pray, May the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, Jesus loved them to the end, 
And while they were at supper, Jesus took bread, blessed, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave his father thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Lord, look upon the sacrifice which you, which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the promise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now for all for whom we offer the sacrifice especially Francis, our Holy Father, Donald, our Bishop, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ. And all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your daughters and sons, Grant, merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and saints, St. Cloud, St. Michael, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with each one of you. And with your spirit. Please offer one another a sign of peace. Peace, Jim. Thank you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Yeah, peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord, we have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth and charity. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We are selling uh, quilt tickets in the gathering space. The drawing will be held on Saturday, February 19th. They are $2 a piece. Wow. (laughs) Join us at St. Peter's breakfast this Sunday and let us do the dishes. All you can eat eggs, sausage, cheesy hash browns, and pancakes. Wow. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Please join us this week for our memorial masses in remembrance of our brothers and sisters who have entered eternal life this past year. St. Joseph on Tuesday night and St. Michael's on Thursday at 6 p.m. All are welcome. Deacon Jim before Mass said, you know, I'm preaching tonight. I said, no, I didn't know. I said, but don't worry, I've got two more tomorrow. (laughs) You want to (laughs) come? The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Lord, keep your family in your constant care, so that under your protection they may be free from all troubles, and by good works show dedication to your name. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh